today I thought we could just chill and chat about 2023, what the hell happened and what we are taking from that into 2024. Lovelies. I know this is a little bit late, but happy new year. If you guys don't already know me, hi, my name is Millie. I recovered from an eating disorder and now I chat about mental health and stuff like that. I wanna speak a little bit about what my goals are for 2024, like with this account and just in my life in general. And um, we can also chat a little bit about this pressure to make the new year a new beginning because it doesn't have to be. I've just been to the gym first time in 2024. Um, it is literally rammed because everyone in there is obviously keeping to their New Year's resolution or whatever of going to the gym and um, it was actually so overwhelming in there because there were so many people. I felt like it was my first time in the gym again. I was just stood there like, oh my god, so scary. And now I'm eating lunch because food is really important to fuel your body after you've done exercise. Exercise shouldn't be a punishment for your body, so please don't treat it like that. 2023 was a big year for me. Um, it was the year that I sat my A-levels, which was honestly mad, given my history with mental illness, the fact that I was even ready to do my A-levels at the same time as everyone else my age, is something that I'm actually very proud of myself about, and I'm not ashamed to say. I originally was intending to do four A-levels, but because of my mental health, I was only able to do two, but I got two A's uh, in art and psychology, and, I then got into my dream uni course, so I thought, drum roll please. I was at the Bristol School of Art and I was doing my fine art degree, but I just really hated the course. I started it in September and at the same time I was trying to do my dance, like just my own dance training, which was almost every day, and my teacher training for dance, um, which is like a whole qualification in its own right. And I was also trying to work, and I was also trying to keep up with doing my Instagram and YouTube, and I've literally never been so overworked and overwhelmed. You know, I was really desperate to keep my options open, um, but by doing that, I was actually just doing lots of things badly. I really hated uni, which was surprising because I've always kind of thrived in like an academic setting. Um, I've never hated like the studying side of school, but I was literally like crying over uni pretty much every single time that I had to go in, which isn't a good sign, um, especially not for someone doing their dream course at their dream uni. And I stuck it out for as long as I could. And then I was like, I can't keep doing this. And I decided to drop out. Since then I've picked up a lot more dance, um, I am dancing almost every day now and I'm loving the increased training even though my body is like struggling. I am really certain that dance is what I want to do, but even just making that decision and that sort of big life commitment has been really difficult because it's like, oh my gosh, you've actually got to make this work now Millie. Getting work is dependent on so many different things and as someone who stresses a lot anyway, I've got a lot of anxiety around what the future is going to look like and what opportunities I will or won't be able to find. I would say since like September, I've really gotten back into making content for social media. I've been absolutely loving it and I hope that is reflected in the content that I'm making. Like um, for the first half of the year, I really put all of this on hold because I was so busy with my A-levels and this just wasn't a priority for me but um, I'm so glad that I've gotten back into it. I am still working part-time as a chef in a pub which I never ever would have imagined myself doing like that is such a random job when I tell people that that's what I do I'm still like that doesn't even feel like me. don't really enjoy it but it pays quite well for someone my age with my level of qualifications so I'm sticking at it just so I can afford to live. And yeah, it is what it is. If you guys want to spend more time on your growth and well-being in 2024, then the Keep Growing Journal is for you. As you guys may know, last year I published my very own journal using all of the techniques that I personally used in my own healing journey to hopefully help you guys do the same. Starting journaling can feel really overwhelming, especially when you don't have much time. This journal gives you a step-by-step -step guide to all of the practices that I used in healing myself. From daily mood trackers, reflections and gratitude logs to having spaces to create a safety plan and reasons to keep going. If you've ever struggled with your mental health, then this journal is for you. 
you guys can find it linked in the description box below. Turning 18 this year was quite a big milestone for me and it affected me a lot more than I ever thought that it would. I don't know, I just, before turning 18 I didn't really think that adulthood would be a big deal. The only change that I really saw was I can use my actual ID now instead of a fake one. That's genuinely all I really thought. It just seemed like another birthday. Actually being an adult and suddenly feeling like you should be taking on all this responsibility and you should be providing for yourself a lot more and not relying on people as much as you did. I found that really difficult. It felt like there was a lot of pressure to know what I wanted to do and be like working towards my future and um, prioritising the right things. Like It kind of felt like, okay, my free trial at life was up. It's time to actually take this seriously. Yeah, since turning 18, I think I've just put way too much pressure on myself to be successful. I don't know if any of you guys relate to that feeling of like working, working, working um, throughout school and following the path that is expected of you and then suddenly realising that it's not what you want from life. Because that is very much the journey that I've been on this year and it's still one that I am on. But I kind of like to see life as one big long journey rather than things having to stop and start depending on the years. I don't think that, for me anyway, that is the most helpful way to look at life. My world hasn't ended just because 2023 has. I don't need to become like a whole new me because the me that I am is okay. We're all in like this constant state of growth and as soon as we start limiting our periods of growth to certain times, you know, like the 1st of January or a new month or a new week or a new year, as soon as we start telling ourselves that we're only allowed to grow, at like certain times, then we're just massively limiting ourselves. I personally think that the healthiest way to start the new year is beginning how you intend to continue. There is no point setting yourself all of these crazy goals that long term are completely unrealistic. There's no point saying I'm never going to have any chocolate because let's face it, at some point in 2024 you are going to eat chocolate. And then what happens? Your world doesn't end, you haven't failed. Life is all about balance and I really want to go into the new year with the intention of finding that balance. Which is why I'm not setting myself any crazy goals or expectations that I'm not going to be able to keep up with. Because when I fail, I'm not going to feel good about myself and for the two or three weeks or however long I'm able to keep up this unrealistic goal for, I probably won't feel that good about myself either. I'll probably feel overworked and run down, which is why I haven't told myself that I'm going to go to the gym every day and I haven't told myself that I'm going to always eat healthily. Those things, for me personally, aren't realistic. I think that by setting ourselves unattainable goals, we are just setting ourselves up to feel miserable and to not love ourselves. I think it's really important to practice listening to your body rather than setting yourself goals despite what your body is trying to tell you. This is something I learned in 2023. I actually really hate running and I think my body hates it as well. Running doesn't make me feel good physically or mentally, which I don't know why, but it took me a really long time to accept. I think because for me anyway, running was kind of seen as like the pinnacle of fitness. Like there is no way that I can be healthy if I'm not good at running and if I don't enjoy running. But for me, the reality of it is it absolutely kills my knees and my shins and it makes me really tight and unflexible for dancing. My body has never enjoyed running, but I just pushed past that for years and like forced myself to do it. So I was like, it is good for me. It isn't good for me. And my body was trying to tell me that, but I just refused to listen and the moral of the story is you need to listen to your body if it's telling you no it is for a reason and it is important to evaluate that reason before you just ignore it completely if your body's telling you that you're hungry it probably means that you're hungry and it probably means that you need some food if you can't listen to what your body needs chances are it's not going to listen to you back and when you really need it to do something for you it might not be able to anymore since i dropped out of uni um I have literally done no art for myself, which is a real shame because art is still 
a passion of mine I absolutely love it and I told myself that if I drop out of uni I will actually have the time to do the art that I actually want to do and I haven't given myself that time just because when life is busy it's very easy to let things like that slide and really really need to prioritize doing that because it's really important I think to do the things that you love even though they're not for work or for success just to do them for myself that needs to be a priority of mine my mum and I are going to make our vision boards for 2024 this afternoon um, which I am so excited about I'm actually really excited for this year dance wise I'm obviously going to keep working on my own dance practice and keep trying to find dance opportunities. I actually found one and I, guys, this is actually it. I'm still not over this, but um, I was actually accepted to do some dancing with a ballet company in Bristol. Then I found out that they are probably not going to accept me anymore because I'm going to be away for some of the important rehearsals in May and June, which is really heartbreaking. But what I'm trying to focus on is the reason that I won't be able to do rehearsals in May and June is because I am going to be in Thailand. I am going traveling this year with my best friend and ever since we were probably like 10 years old, we've always said that we wanted to go traveling together. She's going to be out in Thailand for a couple of months before I am doing some work and then I'm going to join her out there and we're gonna travel around for a month which actually doesn't feel real it's gonna be like the first big trip that I've done on my own and I think it's gonna be amazing but um obviously it means that I am limiting myself this year in terms of dance opportunities because they kind of need you to be able to commit for the whole season which is fair enough but I'm going to try my hardest to adapt my own dance practice to fit in around Thailand so I've got a ballet and a modern exam that I really really need to get done this year and I'm going to try and squeeze them both in before I go away because I know that when I come back after a month off my body is just it's not going to be exam ready so that is like a big aim of mine dance wise and also to hopefully become qualified to teach modern dance um i'm not sure if it's realistic to get that completely done by the end of this year but i really want to try um i'm getting there i'm like one fifth of the way there um <laughs> So we'll see. I really want to try and spend more time with my family because I haven't so much this year, which I guess is a part of growing up and being really busy, but it's made me realise how much I actually really enjoy spending time with them and how much I miss them. And I've realised now how lucky I am to feel that way about my family and I just really want to make the most of that, you know. Sorry, I ran out of storage because I'm using this really shit memory card, so I'm... Um, have to like do this video in two parts we were talking about what i want to get out of this year i hope you guys don't mind me saying but in terms of content that i obviously make for social media i really want to put a lot more time and effort into it hopefully the more time i put into this the less shifts i will have to work at the pub it really is my goal to be able to have an income outside of the money that i make at the pub because it's not fun it's not what I enjoy and it's not something that I want to do in the future whereas this is so it makes sense to me to put my time and effort into this even if it doesn't make me money or it doesn't like nothing comes of it I know like I said all these things and you're probably thinking like what happened to not overworking yourself I really want to take more time to just be restful and um take time for myself preferably like away from technology and away from all of the stresses that just a part of life because I've realised that my happiest times that I spent in 2023 were when I wasn't overworking myself uh, and striving for success. Everyone has a different way of measuring success and I think one good way of measuring it is through happiness so if I'm able to find joy this year then that means that I'm successful. Kind of linked in with that. I want to like focus more on my appearance. It's not something I've really done like in the past year or two because I've been so busy and um it's just sort of like mattered less to me especially since like recovering from my eating disorder which obviously is a lot about how you look I've realized that there are more important things in life than what you look like but sometimes I feel like maybe I've gone too far the other way even just simple things like making my hair look nice and wearing a nice outfit doing stuff like that actually makes you feel good and um that's not something I prioritized at all I really want to know what your guys's goals are 
well for this year please like let me know how 2023 was for you and what you're planning for 2024 just pop it in the comments don't be afraid everyone's lovely all the comments i receive especially on youtube are so nice makes me feel like we're a real like little family so it'd be really nice if you guys could share that with me i hope that you had a lovely christmas and a very happy new year and i really hope that 2024 treats you well and hopefully we will be spending a lot more time together on youtube and on instagram thank you guys for watching today and i will see you next week bye